Hey y'all, it's Nate from 1234DoysTV. Welcome to the part two of um, Hognose Snakes. I will keep keeping them right in the wild from Herpers TV, whatever that video is called. Yeah, we'll base. Make sure you watched part one first of the Hognose Snake video um, reaction. So, without further ado, let's get started. Yeah, uh, this is uh, part two of the Hognose Snake reaction. Yeah, it's always keep keeping them correctly in the wild. Um, here we go. On Halloween, typically, sure. it just kept happens to fall on that day. Right. And then a few weeks later, like last week of November, I will drop their temperatures throughout that week, a few degrees a day, and then they just go into formation starting December 1st. Gotcha, so gotcha. I don't pair them in the fall, but that's a really interesting theory. You to should try. try it next year. I might have this to try year, that. This year, actually, yeah. now. Yeah, I should. Yeah. Well, awesome. All right, so. Um, I forgot what, when they, uh, in the previous video, they mentioned when they started pairing them. Isn't Halloween in the fall? Like, Halloween's in the fall. Um, so, yeah. If, if you're not pairing your snakes in Halloween, who knows? Who, who knows? Um, what day in the fall is par pairing them on? So We're going to release this guy right back where we found him, and hopefully he's going to find a female and continue the generations of hog noses out here on the prairie. Good luck, dude. Find that lady. So with the hog noses being active right about now, and this is when we're finding them out here on the prairies, I'm going to do an ambient temperature read, and really it is 40, yeah, about. I have all, I really want one of those. Um, if I do, if I get one, I'm going to probably do a review on it. Basically, what it is is called a temperature gun. With COVID, you see them go, scanning at stores. Read, 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 read the scanning your temperature. Temperature. Um. These can actually be used in herping or fishing if you want to know like the water temperature or if you want to know the ground temperature because snakes they usually come out in this when the ground is warm and that can really help and that's a general fact in the spring when the ground is warm snakes are going to come out and sun themselves and that's usually what you want to scan with. 40% relative humidity, 25 yeah, degrees humidity. Celsius. Okay which is 77 degrees air temperature. This is the ambient temperature that hog noses are out here. However, what I found over the years by coming up here and watching what these hog noses are doing year after year, this is actually a little bit warm for them. I found hog noses out cruising around at 84 degrees air temperature when the ground temperature is about 20 degrees hotter than that. So they will come out in those extreme temperatures, but this time of year, I'm finding more hog noses okay, cruising nice. around when the temperature is actually cold enough for you to wear a jacket. But the difference is, is that the ground temperature is much warmer than the air temperature. So the hog noses are coming out in those cold air temperatures because the ground is hotter, which actually is a testament to how important belly heat is with your hog noses at home. And to illustrate that, the ground temperature, look at that, 99 degrees. Over here, the ground temperature is 97. In the grassy area of the prairie, and we've got temperatures right in the upper 70s. The temperature drops to the upper 70s in the grass area over here, and this time of day is when the hog noses are going to spend most of their time in this grassy area. And this time of year, the hog noses are going to be found on these open areas in the mornings and the evenings where they sun themselves and absorb all that belly heat. And then as that gets too hot, they're just going to go right over here and retreat into the cooler grasses. So that is what the hog nose snakes are doing out here on the prairies in the springtime. But what about further on into the... All right, before we continue, little fact. One of the ways you can find snakes, um, not, I mean, if you want to, is look for them on the roads during hot summer nights. I, you can either use a car, be vigilant on sa vehicle safety, um, or I just walk with like a flashlight and you can find snakes on the road. Yeah. You're into summertime when naturally the temperatures increase to almost 90 degrees or in the mid 30s. It can even get over 100 degrees air temperature out here on this prairie. And if the air temperature is that hot, then the ground temperature can be up to 20 degrees hotter. And you can wander this entire prairie this time of year and not really see any hog noses. There's a few left here. But the majority of them have left this prairie simply because there's very little refuge. 
I always thought they were going to the woods until I saw this video. Spoiler alert. On this prairie from that intense summer heat. So if the majority of hog noses aren't on this prairie this time of year, where do hog noses go in the summertime? Well, the majority of them come right here into the middle of the wetlands. You see why I mentioned in the last video, I believe that hog nose snakes, one of their favorite foods is toads and frogs, amphibians. Yeah, and they are mildly venomous, though they do not have venom that can affect you. And they don't leave really off, they rarely ever bite humans. They mainly, they mainly just puff up and play dead. And, uh, and though, I mean, at first they'll puff up and hiss at you and try to mock strike you just to get you to go away as like a, put on a show. If that doesn't work, they play dead. They rarely ever bite. And not even that is the rear fangs, which means the fangs that have the venom are like in the back of the throat and they're really used to popping the American toads that will, or frogs that will puff up with air and like there's a defense mechanism and the, the hog nose snake will bite onto it with his mouth, pop it with the fang, rear fang in and swallow it because that's a prey. It's noticeably oh cooler in the lower wetlands, but there's another reason why hog nose retreat from the prairie into wetlands in the summertime. And it used to be thought for a lot of years that hog noses simply went into something called estivation, which think about that as like a reverse hibernation. When it gets too hot, they go into a dormant period just like they do in the winter. And it was long thought that that's what hog noses were doing in the hot summer months. But thanks to research by Jeff LeClaire, who actually did his research right here in Minnesota, he discovered that the hog noses weren't going into estivation. They were coming into the wetland, and there's a very specific reason why they are coming into the wetlands. So if you've ever noticed that sometimes during the summer months, your hog nose may go off feed. He won't want mice at mice. all. Just eat it. Just open, open, open your mouth, take take the mouse. And what these snakes are doing out here in the wild is they're actually changing not only their summer habitats, but they're changing their summer habits. So the hognose snakes will come into wetlands like this and they will climb up on these cattails and wrap their tails around it, hovering over a water source where they know that a lot of amphibians are going to be hanging out. And they literally yeah, turn into little course. vipers in the summertime. So they will hang out on these cattails and when a frog comes along, zap, they'll take it from above just like a little viper. So in these summer months, not only is the habitat of the hognose changing from the prairies to these wetlands, but their diet is changing as well. They're really not interested in taking mammals anymore. Now they want amphibians. And that could explain why hognoses so frequently go off feed in the summer months. So because hognose snakes shift their summer habits to the wetlands, it can be really frustrating when your hognoses go off feed. Just eat it. Just eat the mouse. Oh, man. And therefore, you have to be really diligent with your hognose snakes in the summer months if they go off feed and monitor their weight. And if they're losing weight by going off feed, as some do, some don't, some eat mice the entire summer long. But the ones that do go off feed, they want those amphibians during the summer months. And that's why it's really important that if your hognose snake does go off feed in these summer months, to scent the mice with either frogs or toads to get them eating regularly again. I would not suggest moving them over to frogs and toads in the summer months because then they can get hooked and they'll never touch another mouse. So it's always better to scent the mouse with a frog or a toad as opposed to switching them over to an amphibian diet. But to say that all hog noses leave the prairie and go into the wetland, it's like saying all humans do this or all squirrels do this. And so while the majority of hog noses are off this prairie this time of year and into the wetlands, there are still a few hog noses left here. Female hognose snakes will stay on this prairie until they lay their eggs, and they will lay them in mammal burrows or in moist, rotten logs, whatever they can find that's suitable to lay their eggs. And then after they lay their eggs, that's when they leave this prairie to go into the wetlands. And on the topic of egg laying, I have asked a lot of biologists that I know that have been studying hognose snakes in the wild if there is any evidence that hognose snakes are double clutching here in the wild. And although there really is no documented proof as of right now that hognose snakes are in fact double clutching out here in the wild, it doesn't mean that they're not and more work has to be done out here with wild hognoses to determine 
if they are in fact double clutching out here. So that gives you a window into what the hog noses are doing out here in the hotter summer months and what their habits are and how they've changed from springtime habits into summer habits. But what about later on in the year into autumn where the nighttime temperatures can plummet down into the 30s up here, which are the single digit Celsius. But even on the bright sunniest days like this, the temperature rebounds only into the mid 60s, which are the teen Celsius. And surprisingly enough, after six months, I'm still wearing the same t-shirt. Haven't washed it once. So what those really significant nighttime drop in temperature signals to the hognose snakes is that it's once again time to shift their habits, to shift their habitats and start that great autumn migration out of the wetlands where they just spent the majority of the summer and come back here onto the prairie, which is where they're going to overwinter. And so once those hognoses return to this prairie here in the autumn, it's unknown whether or not they hibernate in the same mammal burrows that they use year after year after year, or if they just find a suitable mammal burrow in which to hibernate in. But once those hog noses return here to the prairie, they're gonna find those females and they're probably going to fall breed with them. All right, guys, so I just found this male here back on the prairie. He's probably just arrived here within the past couple of days after, again, being in the wetlands all summer long. He's back on the prairie here, but I'm not going to bother him because... Two little hognose snakes sitting in the grass, K-S-S-I-N-G. Yeah, you, get, you know what's going to happen here. You know yeah. where this is going. Look what he's doing here. You know, I'm sure we've all seen that kind of body twitch that males do when they get the scent of a female when we pair them up. Well, that's exactly what he's doing right now. He could, in fact, have the scent of a female that might be in this area, and that's why he's doing that little body twitch thing that he's doing. But it's so cool to start off in the spring and see these guys on the prairie and then know what they're doing all summer long and then see them back on the prairie here in the autumn. It's really cool to see that life cycle kind of go full circle. And in about a month or so, he's going to remain underground throughout the entire winter. And in the spring, he's going to start that whole yearly cycle again from there. But that gives you kind of an idea of what Emily and I were talking about earlier on in the spring, that hognose snakes out here in the wild, they do fall mm -hmm. pair. And so this time of year, it's a really good idea to pair your hog noses up at home. And as you do that, and as you get them prepared for brumation, it might be a good idea to reduce the temperature in their enclosures at night to simulate what's happening out here in the wild. That's and again, cool. during that uh, about 30 days or so where you are reducing the nighttime temperatures in their enclosures, that's when you should be fall pairing your hog noses at home. So guys, I hope that this video demonstrated what hog noses are doing out here in the wild during their active period between spring and fall. Not only that, but I hope it demonstrated the importance of having a cool side and a warm side to your enclosures, including the importance of belly heat. You know, hog nose snakes are wanderers out here. They travel great distances over this prairie into the wetlands and back into the prairie. And the enclosures that we keep our captive bred hog noses in should reflect that. So again, I hope this video gave you a lot of ideas on how to better keep your hog noses at home. So as always, guys, leave a comment below with a tip or a technique on how you keep your hog noses so that other people can learn from you as well. And be sure to check out this channel's sponsor. All right, this is going to be the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to me as well as check out Herper's TV. Some of his videos, like he said, leave a comment. Um, I just totally stole that from him, but still, it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, hognose snakes are pretty interesting, and he mentioned that, uh, they basically just, that's what they do out in the, in the wild, and they, he's, he's mainly focusing on the western hognose snake, but the eastern hognose snake also is pretty much, I imagine it'd be the same concept, um, because they have both of those in Minnesota, but they were in my, my neck of the woods here in Tennessee, as well as Michigan, northern Illinois, Indiana, Parts of most eastern part of Wisconsin, you got the eastern hognose snake. And that's going to be, those they haven't really divided into a separate species. It's still called the eastern hognose snake. And I've seen two in my life. For those of you Illinois, Chicago people out there, if you're familiar with braid dunes, I did see one out there. Do not poach. Because that they, they are, that is a state area protected. I mean, you can go look for them if you want and probably find them. I find lots of cool stuff, but uh, 
Um, try not to poach. It's a bad thing to do. Hey guys, yeah, thanks for watching and please subscribe. I excuse the silly business. Um, it's just to help me get more views. S support the channel and support Herpers TV, whatever you do, what you got to do. Yeah. Um, think, see y'all next week and uh, yeah. We got, we got videos coming. I started being YouTube again. Like the beard.